In this video, I want to show you how to find, using a standard normal distribution table, how to find probabilities that are of interest. Uh, for example, if you are asked to find the probability that z, and we'll talk about z in just a second, is less than negative 1.32, using a table, how can we actually find that value? Well, a probability, I want you to think a probability, this thing right here, is simply an area. Right? It's, an, it's an amount of area, and I showed in a previous video that the total area under a standard normal distribution bell-shaped curve is equal to 1. So we better get a value, and these values here, whatever we come up with, will always be less than 1. All right, um, let me just show you what I mean by using a table. I have various uh, statistics books. Let me just pick this my ca uh, camera up here. Um, I, I have a whole bunch, and so it depends on what kind of book you're using here, but I hope you can see this is one example of a standard normal table. I can't zoom into the nitty-gritty there, but you know this is one example. But I want you to pay attention, pay special attention to the picture at the top of these of these pictures of these uh, tables here. So it depends on what book you're using, but pay really close attention to what the picture is telling you. Let me get rid of that one here. Here, here's another example of a book. I got this from a different stats book, and you can see this is just coming from the the uh, inside back cover of the of the book. And again, I'm just kind of paying attention, and especially to the to the uh, picture, right? Because the picture tells you what's going on inside this table here. Uh, here's another example. Clear out all this junk. Another example. Got this out of a different book. Um, the book that I actually use quite a bit in my classes is a Triola. That's the name of the author. Um, called Elementary Stats, and this is the table that he uses. So I'm paying really close attention to the picture up at the top. Um, of these tables, all right? And notice, at least in this table that I'm using, that there's shading going on, and the shading is to the left. Okay, so what I'm going to do here to go back to my problem is this problem that, I'm, that I posted here, that I just put, is assuming that we're looking to the left. That's a less than symbol. So we're looking to the left of negative 1.32. Picture-wise, picture-wise, here's what's going on. I have a bell-shaped curve. Because it's standard, you can look this up in a previous video. That means that the mean is sitting right in the middle, right here. Dee, 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 dee. And so that means that everything to the right hand side of zero is positive, right? Everything over here is positive. And everything to the left hand side of zero is negative. Well, that makes sense on the number line, right? All this stuff is negative over here. Okay, so if I was to place, if I was to try to find a negative 1.32, I hope you see that that's got to be somewhere on the left-hand side of 0. So it's got to be something over here. It doesn't really matter where you put it. We'll just stick it over here somewhere. So I've got a negative 1.32. That is the z-score that I have right now. And since that is a less than symbol, that means we're shading everything to the left of it. Okay, shading to the left. Now according to the table that I'm using, right, according to the table that I'm using, which is this book right here, I'm going to use the negative z-score table. There it is right there. I'm going to use this thing, this negative z-score table, because it shades to the left. That's exactly what I'm after. So I'm going to scroll down here and look for a negative 1.32. And anyways, if, you can look it up in your own book, but you can see that hopefully you'll get a value of 0.0934. 0.0934. So there's my answer for this first problem that I'm going to present. All right, so 0.0934. Typically, if you're using my math lab especially, it wants it rounded off to four decimal places. And thank goodness the table already does that for you. So that's what that's the picture that's going on. Maybe the picture is really helpful to you visually to see. And because that was a less than symbol, I shaded to the left. And that's what my table actually gave me. So I just looked up a negative. 1.32 in the table, and I came up with that um, that probability. So what I'm trying to say is, this number, 0.0934, corresponds to this area right here. All of this area right here underneath the curve, that now I'll shade in blue, 
is 0 0.0934, which is definitely less than 1, right? The total area under the curve is 1, and that is definitely not the total area, so it's 0 0.0934. Or some people look at that decimal and say, hey, that's about 9%, right? 9.34% to be exact. Okay, let's change the problem up a little bit. What if they asked, right, what if they're asking for something like this? What's the probability that z is greater than negative 1.32? All right, so now this time we're not looking for less than. We're not going to shade to the left. This time we're going to shade to the right. So this is what I'm looking for. Let's draw a picture because, again, the picture really is helpful. Zero sitting right in the middle. And you can see that negative 1.32 is somewhere over here to the left-hand side of zero. But I'm not shading to the left this time. This time I'm shading to the right. Everything, I'm looking for all of this area over here. And why? Because this is a greater than symbol, right? Greater than greater than, and greater than means to the right. Okay, so I can't just use the table that I presented with over here. I can't just use this table as is because that's a shading to the left. So I need all of this area over here to the right of that curve. Well, if I use the table, as you saw in the previous example I just did, I had an area of 0.0934, right? In other words, all of this stuff over here Right, all of this area over here that I just shaded in blue is 0 0.0934. Well, because you know that the total area is 1, then this area over here in red must be its complement. Complement means 1 minus 0 0.0934. So I'm going to work this out, and that's all of this red area over here. Well, I can just do that very easily on my calculator, or you can probably figure it out doing it mathematically no problem. Let me turn this guy on and punch in my 1 minus 0 0.0934. And you'll see that I've got a value of 0 0.9066. Okay, so this total area over here is 0 0.9066, which, think about that for a second, folks. Think about that picture-wise for a second. If all of this area is 1, and just this little much over here on the left-hand side of negative 1.32 is 0 0.0934, then the majority of the area under the curve sitting on the right side, which is all this red stuff that I highlighted, is 0 0.9066. Yeah, that's roughly 90% or 91% of the total data. Okay. One more last example is this one. What if sometimes they want you to shade in between, right? So sometimes you get a problem where they say, look, find the probability that we have some z number and we're looking for the stuff that's in between. How about uh, negative 0 0.21? I'm just making these up here, 0 0.85. This time I want the area that's in between those two z numbers. All right, well, let's go to the picture. You know that phrase, a picture says a thousand words or something like that. All right, so here is our picture, z zero sitting right in the middle. Where is a positive 0.85? Oh, that's got to be to the right of zero because all these numbers over here are positive, so 0 0.85 is sitting over here. And where is negative 0.21? Oh, that's got to be on the left side of zero because that's where all the negatives sit, 0.21. So we're looking for, hope you see, and I wasn't being very exact of where I stuck these things, were they? Just I know that 0.85 is on the right, and I know that negative 0.21 is on the left, so it doesn't really matter where, but as long as they're on the right hand, the correct side, I should say. Look, I want all of this area that's in between them, all right? All the area in between them. So it, again, it depends on what kind of table you're using, but when I use this table here that comes with the book that I'm using, and it's shading to the left, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up two things. I'm going to look up 0.85. I'm going to look this up, 0.85, which 0, this is a positive number, so 0 0.85, I hope uh, you might agree with me, comes out to be, all right, this one over here comes out to be 0 0.8023, all right? Um, again, that came from looking this up on the table. I'm also going to look up negative 0 0.21 negative 0 0.21 okay that's not too bad that's 4168 4168 and so what I actually looked up folks I hope you see 
are these areas. I looked up this 8023 actually represents all of this area right here that I'll shade in green for you, okay? It actually represents all of this area here. Okay? That's what the 8023 represents. And then I looked up this negative 0.21. That gave me an area of 4168. That's actually this area. I'll shade over here in black, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm going to take all of this green stuff, take away this black stuff here, and I'm left with what I shaded originally, which was in red. That's a geometry problem, really, right? So I'm just going to take the difference of these two numbers. I'm going to subtract them. And I hope you see that um, what we are left with is, right, what we're left with is the total area in between those two z numbers. So here it is, point four one. 6, 8. I'm just kind of doing this on my calculator, but I'll show you what I just did. Okay, I punched in 0 0.8023 minus 0 0.4168. I'm going to hit equals, and I've got 3855. That is my total area in between, 0.3855. There we go. Four numbers rounded to four decimal places. That's what I would punch in on my math lab. That is this area sitting right here in the middle. Right in the middle, point thirty eight fifty five.